We're talking about Christianity 101. We're talking about the basic foundational understandings of Christianity. And one of the basic foundations of Christianity is the Bible. We began talking about the Bible earlier this week, and today we want to talk specifically about the New Testament. Now, let me remind you that the Bible was written by 39 different authors into 66 different books over a period of about 1,600 years. The Old Testament began with Moses writing it down 1,500 years before Jesus, and the New Testament began to be recorded about 50 years after the birth of Jesus and was done about 95 AD when the Apostle John finished the book of Revelation. Well, today I want to give you a big picture of the New Testament. So we want to talk about the New Testament. And what we want to say is that the Bible is easier to understand if you realize it's a collection of books. So think of it as a library. There's an old section of the library called the Old Testament and a new section of the library called the New Testament. And within that section, there are sections as well, smaller sections. The first, and you might want to take your Bible and turn to the front of it to the table of contents and make some notes, and I'll show you how the New Testament is laid out. The first section in the New Testament is called the Gospels, and that's a word that means good news. And the reason it's good news is the Gospels are all about Jesus. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, Matthew was a, a tax collector, very Jewish. So his gospel, he tells the facts about Jesus, but in his gospel, he emphasizes the Old Testament because he's writing to Jews, and it's very detailed because he's a tax collector. The second book is called the book of Mark. Now, Mark is writing to a Roman audience, action-oriented people. So it's a shorter gospel, not as many big words, a lot of stories, a lot of action. If you've never read the Bible before, re start reading in the Gospel of Mark. It's the easiest to understand and it tells you all about Jesus. The third book of the Gospels, third book in the New Testament, is the Gospel of Luke. Now Luke was a doctor. He wasn't one of the original disciples. But he records things through the eyes of a doctor. He was also a missionary through the eyes of a missionary. And he's trying to prove the point that Jesus not only is 100% God, but he's also 100% man. That God became man. I love the Gospel of Luke. John, he's an original disciple. He's a fisherman. He's writing to a broad audience. And he wants them to understand Jesus really is the Messiah, the Son of God, God the Son, 100% God. Those are the Gospels. That's the most important part of the Bible you can read because it's all about Jesus. Well, after Jesus died and rose again from the dead and walked on earth for 40 days, he ascended into heaven and the church was born on planet earth. The history of the church, the first 30 years of, of what happened after Jesus died is recorded in the history section, the book of Acts, the actions of the Holy Spirit through the early church. The first section of Acts deals with the church in Jerusalem, the first church, and especially the apostle Peter. And then it shifts from the first church, Jerusalem, to the church spreading all around the Mediterranean Sea, all around through the missionary efforts of the apostle Peter. Paul. Then we get to the letters. And these are letters written by someone to someone. The first part of the letters are letters from the Apostle Paul. And the name of the book tells us who he was writing to. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. He's writing letters to the church in Rome, the church in Corinth, the church in Galatia, the church in Ephesus, the church in Philippi, the church in Colossae. These are letters Paul wrote to churches. And then you also have letters he wrote to individuals. 
to 1 Timothy. He wrote writing to Timothy, the pastor of the church of Ephesus, to Titus, the pastor of the church at Crete. And so Paul's letters take us right up to Philemon, and that's the last one of Paul's letters. Then you have letters by other authors, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John. And so Hebrews is a book, we don't know who the exact human author was. We know God ultimately is the author. It was written by a Jewish person to Jew Jewish people. We think it has to do with the Jewish priests that got saved in Jerusalem and then got persecuted and left Jerusalem and were scattered around because it's the old, Hebrews is all about how Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. You have Peter that was one of the disciples. You have John who was one of the disciples. You have James who actually, when Joseph and Mary, after Jesus was born, they had kids. The oldest was James. You have Jude after Joseph and Mary was, after Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary had kids. One of them was Jude. And so Jude wrote a letter, James wrote a letter. Both Jude and James didn't think Jesus was God until after he rose from the dead, and then they couldn't deny that he was God, and they became Christians. Fascinating. Well, the last book of the New Testament, the prophecy section, is one book, the book of Revelation, and it tells us not, the prophecies of the book of Revelation haven't happened yet. And so they tell us what's going to happen, especially on earth during a period of time called the tribulation. It also tells us about the second coming of Jesus, what the new heaven and new earth are going to be about. It's an amazing book, but it's kind of hard to understand because there's a lot of imagery. And it was written 2,000 years ago, so a lot of the things John is describing, the language hasn't been developed yet to describe these things. So if you're just starting to read the Bible, Start with the Gospels. Start with the Gospel of Mark. I suggest it's the easiest to understand. But read the Bible, especially read the New Testament. It is God's Word. It is amazing. Read it.